Ja, hi there, this is TuxOcher.com. Welcome on my video channel. Today we want to take a closer look on the Early Access Update 2 version of Luminar Neo, which is sufficient enough to process your raw images, especially if you're taking landscape photography or close-up or marker photography. For the classical portrait or wedding photographer, there might be some functions missing, so you might have to wait till the final Luminar 1.0 release. Okay, but let's go to the Macintosh and take a first look on Luminar Neo in the version 0.9.3. Okay, I already started uh, Luminar Neo, in this case on a MacBook Air. And we want to go through one image processing as an example for you to see that there is almost no difference between Macintosh and Windows version of Luminar Neo and of course that even Luminar Neo is, as you can see here version uh, 0.9.3 that is far away from the final release you can uh, so far use it as a standalone image processor if you need. Okay, I got here the uh, catalog uh, view and uh, maybe I take a picture like that. And as you can see that is uh, pretty dull and we start editing it, editing it. Go to the edit tab. The uh, new thing Oh, which should work now is uh, the crop tool is the horizontal and vertical flip of an image and uh, what I mentioned in the develop tool is that uh, or in the enhance uh, section of the development is that uh, Sky Enhancer now is also working on the Windows version okay let's start and I usually would start to bring down the highlights so I have a little bit more, more detail in the uh, sky here and of course enhance the uh, shadows and maybe we'll go to highlights back down to almost 100% and then we go here on uh, color and here by the way you got the uh, color pipette where you can go into one area of your image as a reference from your for your white balance and of course you got here the uh, yeah sort of presets for for the uh, white balance that is daylight cloudy and so on so you can set the white balance according to your need but the uh, thing i wanted to do is uh, because i got here into the uh, color tab is to bring up the uh, saturation a little bit like this and the vibrance okay and what i like about uh, lumina neo and that was already implemented in uh, lumina ai is the foliage enhancer so you can uh, make the uh, green here in the foreground pop a little bit more like this one and now i can go to the uh, enhance module to enhance the uh, whole scene maybe like that and of course to enhance the sky like this one and uh, maybe I would do apply a little vignette on this image to concentrate the uh, view more towards the uh, center like that and if you switch between before after as you can see some only a few steps and that's uh, yeah quite a big difference in developing your images and now we move to the desktop pc on a windows operating system to see if this is uh, almost the same procedure in uh, lumina neo or if there are some important functions missing in the windows os version Okay, I started here Lumina Neo with a couple of uh, pictures. What you might first notice is here, 
if you go here from the catalog view to a single view, you see that the image is uh, presented in a much more contrasty and saturated way in the catalog view compared to the uh, single view here in this window. That's a little bit annoying and I hope that uh, Skalem will fix this. I think it's a bug. Okay, let's go to the uh, edit tab. And the first new one you got here is uh, under development and color. You got now a pipette for white balance. So like in other raw converters, you can pull that uh, into an area of the image, which should be the uh, reference for the white balance and just click OK, like here, and it's getting a little bit warmer. You also got, uh, beside the uh, custom white balance, a sort of uh, preset white balance, which you can choose here from the drop-down menu. The other thing is under the uh, crop menu. Of course, you can crop the image here, but now you can flip the image uh, horizontally, and you can flip the image vertically. Okay, let's close that one and go back to the development tab. And first thing I do usually on those uh, images is uh, to reduce the exposure a little bit to get a little bit more details in the sky, bring down the highlights and open up the uh, shadows a little bit like this. Okay, the next thing I do is to bring up uh, saturation and vibrance a little bit. And one thing I like about uh, Luminar, which was already implemented in the Luminar AI version, is here under landscape, the enhanced uh, foliage to pop up the greens in the uh, image like this. And under enhanced, that is uh, now working in the uh, Windows version is uh, the Accent AI and of course the Sky Enhancer, which we already know from Luminar AI. I bring that up and the Accent and that is, uh, I think, uh, already pretty good. And maybe what I could do here is give it a little vignette to concentrate on the center of the image like this one. And if we do a before after, I think that's uh, quite a difference as you can see here. And uh, of course you could process it further, like uh, add a little bit more contrast here in the sky and maybe here in the wood. But here you can already see that even with the uh, beta version, you can do quite a bit on image processing in Luminar Neo. As you could see, it is uh, even in the early access version possible to do enhanced image processing from your RAW files, especially in landscape or macro and close-up photography. So you could use this uh, program to process your images. Of course, there are still some functions missing, like layers and uh, some of the functions um, masking AI and so on, which are maybe imp very important for a portrait and uh, wedding photographer. But in this version so far presented by Skylam, you can work with it. Of course, I still will use Luminar Neo as a plugin for Lightroom or Photoshop. So far, I could uh, test it and uh, Photoshop plugin works and uh, the Lightroom plugin, didn't, I didn't find that it already calls Luminar AI and not Luminar Neo. Maybe there is still a bug, so, but I don't think that is uh, too severe of a bug. And I guess that uh, Skylum will correct that in the near future. But as you could see, especially in landscape photography, you could do uh, an enhanced uh, image processing. And of course, I like that the AI Accent and the uh, Sky Enhancer is on board. 
and uh, in the early access version, just like the sky replacement function, and of course in the landscape, uh, landscape tab, the foliage enhancer, which I use quite a lot in the last days, testing out Luminar Neo. But uh, since uh, Luminar Neo will not offer many management tools for your images, I will stick to Luminar Neo as a plug-in for Lightroom and uh, Photoshop. And uh, of course, if you use another photographic software, you might as well wait till the final version is there and then Luminar Neo will even support layers. So you don't need a Lightroom cloud subscription, which includes Photoshop with its uh, layer functionality. And uh, talking about the release date, I don't have any information about the precise release date. So I can just uh, read from the FAQ and there Scarlin posted that uh, release will be somewhere at the end of winter, which would mean around the mid of uh, March. But uh, I could think that uh, Scarlin release uh, final release earlier and will update the program to release or implement further functionality, which is still missing here in the early access version. Okay, that was my view on Luminar Neo. And if you have any questions, just place them in the video or in the comments of the corresponding blog post. And if this uh, video was helpful to you, you might think about placing a like on the video and I surely would appreciate it, it if you would subscribe my channel, but then don't forget to hit the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. Okay, that was my little view on Luminar Neo and all I have to say till the next time, ciao, tux oche.